In this video we introduce quantum mechanics and see uh, the birth of quantum mechanics by uh, Max Planck. Right, so quantum mechanics is the field of science that we use to understand the behavior of very small particles. And by very small, uh, we refer to things like electrons or single atoms. Okay, so it turns out that uh, the laws uh, operative in those very small particles are very different from the laws that we actually have uh, to explain macroscopic objects. Okay, for example, uh, in the macroscopic world, uh, we have a set of assumptions that uh, work very well. One of them is that uh, a particle has a well-defined trajectory. So if you think about baseball, uh, the motion of a baseball out of the hand of a pitcher and how it propagates in time, you can fully predict uh, what the trajectory of the object of the ball is going to be at any point in time. Those those laws are can be worked out, and again, you can do that prediction with high accuracy. Okay, that's actually not the case in quantum mechanics, where uh, predicting the trajectory uh, of any particle will be impossible. We will actually see that it is impossible to know uh, where a particle is and what velocity that particle is traveling with okay with uh, uh, very high accuracy that's just impossible to, to know it doesn't happen in quantum mechanics the second thing that is different, different in quantum mechanics uh, than it is in, uh, in regular classical mechanics is that uh, the energy of a moving particle uh, uh, only has some very well defined values to use the baseball analogy okay, to us it wouldn't make any sense that uh, you could throw a baseball at 95 miles per hour and then if you reach back and throw a little more, uh, a little harder, that baseball would have a, a speed of 100 miles per hour. Okay, but never any velocity in between 95 and 100 miles per hour. That simply is not the case. You could uh, envision a device in the machine that is able to go from 95 miles per hour, or is able to throw a baseball 95 miles per hour, and then 95.1, 95.2, 95.3, with any precision that you want. Okay? However, uh, that's actually not the case in the uh, quantum world for very small particles where the energies are actually going to be very well defined. So you will be able to have a velocity and if that, en if that particle acquires uh, uh, more energy, okay, it won't be able to have uh, any velocity uh, above that. It will only be allowed to have some velocities that are very, very well defined. Okay, and again, that doesn't happen in the real world. The last thing that is very different from uh, the quantum world with our microscopic world is that uh, particles do not have any wave behavior. Okay, so what do we mean by wave behavior? Well, we just saw uh, in a prior video the double slit experiment in which a wave can bend around a corner slit and then uh, cause uh, constructive interference, destructive interference with a different wave and so forth. Okay, particles can do that. If you have a particle going through a slit, the particle is simply just going to continue to go through the slit and propagate uh, in whatever trajectory uh, uh, it's to whatever place it's headed. Okay, uh, we will actually see that in the quantum world that is not the case. Particles and waves have mixed properties. Okay, so we will see that particles like electrons can behave as waves and they do diffract. Okay, so anyways, that's, that's a, a kind of an introduction to uh, the level of behavior uh, that we have to understand in quantum mechanics. All right, so now, now let's actually start to see um, uh, some of the pioneering experiments that lay the foundation to treat those very small particles. All right, the first experiment that uh, we're going to talk about is uh, the blackberry radiation experiment. Blackberry radiation is a simple, uh, is an easy to understand concept. Um, any object at a given temperature is giving off energy, okay, that depends on that temperature. So, for example, a warmer uh, object is going to be able to emit uh, electromagnetic radiation, okay, uh, uh, with some uh, wavelengths that are different from those emitted from a colder body. Okay, so the two bodies that we're going to be use, using to uh, examine uh, this radiation of electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic radiation from warm objects would be the sun, whose temperature is about 6,000 Kelvin, at least on the surface, and then a human, whose temperature is about 310 Kelvin. Okay, if you actually take a look at the electromagnetic radiation coming from the sun and try to um, see the intensity as a function of the wavelength, Okay, so it has a curve that looks like this, okay, more or less, where this peak is about 500 nanometers. Okay, so again, uh, the sun is very hot, and it emits energy 
uh, with some wavelengths, but the peak happens to be at about 500 nanometers, which is in the visible regime. Right? So our eyes have adapted quite well to be able to leverage the uh, maximum number of photons that we get from the sun, which is again in the visible regime. If you're able to, able to do this for uh, for a human uh, whose temperature is actually much lower, okay, so this is the sun where the temperature is again about 5600 Kelvin or so. For a human where the temperature is 310 Kelvin, we are also emitting radiation. Okay, but that radiation is not invisible; it's actually in the infrared. Right? So that's why when you have infrared cameras, you can do thermal imaging of a uh, human. Right? So uh, this curve looks like something like this, where the peak will be now in the infrared. Okay. So again, notice that there's a shift in uh, the intensity, but more importantly, the peak of these distributions of electromagnetic radiation emitted from a hot body depending on the temperature. This is for a cold object, human. Uh, this is for a hot object. Again, you see um, that the peak goes to uh, lower and lower wavelengths, which means higher and higher energies. Well, this is something that classical physics actually failed to explain. You can't explain the shape of these curves using our interpretation of uh, electromagnetic radiation up to quantum mechanics. Okay, so here's what uh, Planck uh, uh, said to, again, uh, give birth to quantum mechanics. The idea is as follows. When you have a, a body that is at a temperature, that body has some oscillations, okay, that uh, are able to get rid of that energy, okay? So you, you might have an oscillator that is oscillating at this frequency, and uh, you can get rid of that at the energy of this oscillator by simply emitting electromagnetic radiation, and now the oscillation is, uh, is reduced to uh, this amplitude. Okay? Now, uh, what we actually know in classical physics is, is that uh, well, the energy of this oscillator can actually have any value, right? So you can move from this oscillation to that oscillation to that oscillation to that oscillation seamlessly. But what Planck actually had to do in order to be, to be able to fit these curves is to actually assume that the energy emitted by that, by that oscillator actually has very well-defined values. And that energy is simply going to be the following. The energy is going to be n multiplied by h and nu, where this is just the frequency of the oscillator. Okay? That's, that's how many times per second you're doing this. And it's also the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation that you're emitting okay, in order to get rid of that oscillating uh, energy. But the key here is that uh, this n number Okay, it has to be an integer, and it cannot be a real number. Okay, h is simply a constant, which is uh, what we call Planck's constant, 6.626, 10 to the minus 34 joules, per, uh, joules time second. And again, but the, the, the very important aspect of this is that, again, when we think about energy in the classical term, when we think about that, that, that baseball, the energy of the baseball can have any value of energy that we wish, but that's not the case for this electromagnetic radiation emitted from an object. It turns out that, again, that the energy of that uh, uh, emitted uh, electromagnetic radiation can only have very specific values, right? So if you put here a value of n 0.5, that's simply not an allowed uh, 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 value of the energy, or 0.6, or 0.7, or any numbers between uh, uh, that are not integer. Okay, so again. You can emit a uh, photon. Zero would mean that you don't, you're not emitting anything. But one means that you're emitting uh, this electromagnetic radiation with an energy of h nu. But then if you want to emit more energy at that frequency, you will have to emit 2 h nu. Or if you want more energy, you will have to emit 3 h nu. Okay, so clearly this says that the energy that you have accessible to emit is not continuous. Instead, it's discrete. Okay, and this puzzle planned for a number of years until Einstein was actually able to reconcile uh, this idea with a photoelectric experiment. Okay, but this is the birth of quantum mechanics, the idea that energy actually is not this is not continuous, instead is discrete or quantized.